And then the other piece of preparation, do you know what that is in the middle? The thing that says dementia, you know what that is? Those are apps. Uh, apps on your phone. And I have about eight apps that, that I really love, and I have three that are, are really cool, and I'll explain them to you. These are just some of the other books I use for uh, resources um, that have really been helpful about the behavioral changes. But in terms of the apps themselves, um, one of the things that we have to recognize is that we don't have all the answers. So the first app that I really, really, really love is um, by this thing called uh, Home Instead. I don't care how it works, it's really cool. It, um, you can look up every behavior possible that deals with anger and aggression and all that kind of stuff. And what's really neat about it is that, suppose your, your loved one doesn't want to take a shower that day. You can click on behaviors and look up showering and there are all kinds of strategies in there for what happens if they don't want to get in the shower. I think that's just like the coolest thing ever. And so I've been able to use these kinds of things to sort of get me uh, through different things. That's my first one. The second one, my mother loves music, but there's this program called um, Music First. And I don't, again, I don't know how it works. I don't really care. What is the cool about that is that the closer you get to the sundowning hour, um, the music they have, I don't know if it's arranged a special way. I'm not sure what the strategy is, but what is awesome about it is that it calms my mother instantly. She'll be, you know, I don't want to go, I want to go home. And you whip on this little music and it just, it's like a drug. It just, she goes silent. It is cool. And so um, it's about, you, you get like a 30 day free trial kind of thing. They have music for behavioral things. They have music for sundowning. It is just cool. There's some Yanni and some other things. Um, and again, I don't know if it's because of how the musical selections are arranged. I'm not sure what it is, but it is mind blowing because in the car, most of us have XM and she likes the Frank Sinatra channel and stuff, but not if she's stressed out. So the anxiety music is, is cool. And after the 30 day trial is over, it's like $5 a month. I spend more than that every day at Starbucks. So it's worth it. When she's uncomfortable, everybody else is uncomfortable. So I just, let's keep playing the music. It is, it is a fabulous um, thing. So that works well too. And then this last one, one of the things I loved about um, what Dr. Taylor had to say about activities in particular is friends don't come over, he said, anymore and all that. My mom only has Miss Adams, but this thing is so cool. It's called Lifetime's Talk Sampler, and it sounds so silly, but it's really just you push a button, and then all of these different things come up, like favorite recipes. So it's just conversation starters, because you know people stop calling because they don't know what to talk about. He was absolutely right. And so when you can flip to these different things, it's great. And though it seems so silly, like why didn't I think of that? We could have talked about old neighbors or cooking or whatever it was, but there are all kinds of categories. And it's like a game. My mother thinks she's playing a game and we love it. And my, you know, my daughter uses it with her and we're all just having a good time. But all of these kind of things that sort of keep any behavior um, at bay. And then this last one, I love the, the question about the finances and all that, the senior care zone. I get an email every day, I got it this morning already. And it really helps you with, especially if you have a network of caregivers. Now I'm alone, it doesn't help me that much. But those of you who have friends and family, like you would get an email and it would say, well today's your turn to take mom to the dentist and then you're gonna do the doctor and you're going to lunch and you're doing some other things. So the email tells you what's coming up for the week and uh, who's gonna be helping you with those things, fabulous. It's, it's like um, your personal assistant. So if you forget things, um, it can really help you. Love that kind of stuff. The more things we can use to be prepared and to come up with strategies, the better off you know, kind of we all are, so that's cool. And then the last um, piece I think, you know, the last two pieces are really about humor and, and the doctor was great at you know, laughing at himself and stuff, uh, things like that. If my mother didn't have dementia, she could be an amazing stand-up comedian. She is as funny as she can be. And, and you know, some people say, oh, well, you know, you don't want to come off like you're laughing at her. No, that's not uh, it at all. You really need to laugh because if we don't, we'd all be crazy. You know, there are some things that go on that, that are really are funny. And in that first picture, on our 25th anniversary, of course, I had Miss Adams there to make sure my mom didn't run off during the uh, ceremony. And then afterwards, of course, we had a big reception. There's mom and I dancing. The scary thing was she had been dancing for like, you know, four or five songs. So I was getting a little worried that, you know, aren't you tired? So I said, Mom, aren't you tired? Don't you think, you know, we should sit down? She says, oh, no. She said, I, I only remember dancing one song. I forgot to be tired. So you're kind of like, oh, my God. <laughs> so 
So she's just so, she's just so cool about it. And then that, that thing in the middle, I wish you could really see the book uh, because it, it says, of course, how to keep your brain alive. And her response to that, she's read it at least 200 times that we know of. And then she always says, well, I don't want to forget anything. Hmm, we probably need our money back, but that's still her favorite you know, book. It's the, the coolest thing. But it's falling apart. We have so much scotch tape on it. You know, my husband says, honey, why don't you just get another one? But she wants that one. You know, so we keep taping the pages back in, and she loves it. So you know, again, she reads that out loud, and it's you know, really cool. And then that last picture, if many of you have ever been to the Martin Luther King Memorial in DC, it's a cool thing. It has uh, all of his favorite quotes uh, that goes down this beautiful walkway with water and everything. And then, of course, there's the huge statue of him. My mom was having a really good day when we went there. She was reading all the quotes, and then she would tell you the ones that she liked, and she even picked out her favorite quote. So my husband said, wow, this is great. She's having such a great day. And so we take the picture, and I, you know, she turns around and looks up at him. And I said, Mom, do you think it looks like Martin Luther King? And she said, it looks just like him. I just don't remember him being that tall. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you almost had to roll me you know, out with that. So I mean, we just laugh and laugh at her. And she really can laugh at herself. It was going so well. You're like, wow. But so many things she says are just hysterical. And, and you know, it's, but I try not to confuse her either. And sometimes the things we do accidentally can set them off. I'll give you just one example, and that was, uh, I had bought her some memory foam slippers and you know, thought I was really doing something. She needed new bedroom slippers and she puts them on. She's kind of walking around. She looks really funny. She looks um, hurt even. And I said, what's the matter? Is something wrong with the shoes? And she said, no, I just don't get how something I wear on my feet is supposed to fix what's wrong with my brain. I'm like, oh. So, so I kind of took the shoes away, like, okay, we'll get you a new pair. They weren't memory foam slippers. I did, who knew that that would set them off? So, so many things they have a reaction to that we weren't anticipating. You just always have to be ready because every day is different. So that's cool. So the humor part, though, but I swear you can't make it if you don't really laugh. And then the last piece, hope. We, we have to have some hope about this. And you know, one of the things, that, at least before I came in, that, that I didn't hear the doctor say was really uh, this whole financial piece, I mean, we're just going to implode here in the United States if we don't come up with some kind of strategy for it. So one of the things that I've done, and I, I love when he said, you know, get off your butt and do something. I've been doing, uh, I've just become this advocate. I, I, I've, you know, as I said, I'm a fifth generation Washingtonian, but I had not been on the hill to do anything. All of a sudden, I'm up on the hill, I'm asking for money. That picture at the top is, um, we went to a, there's an organization called Us Against Alzheimer's, and it is a uh, what we call an engaged and enraged group of folk who go and try to get you know additional money. And so those are the fundings that we've been able to get in 2014 and even going into 2015. And so we, um, you know, we have summits and we go to the hill, we knock on doors. So in that picture. Uh, several of us um, walked a mile to Capitol Hill carrying our, we made shadow boxes of all our loved ones and then testified in front of Congress telling them about, you know, our particular loved ones. And that was very emotional, much more emotional than I thought it would be. But, you know, those are the kinds of things, as he said, that we really have to do. Nancy Pelosi was our um, keynote speaker. And after that event, we got an additional 50 million. Truthfully, though, we need about 200 million to kind of come, to come close to some of the drugs that are almost ready for the market. So keep your fingers crossed. And you know, if we all work together, um, as he said, I think we can really, really go a long way. So living so close to Washington, I know they don't agree about a lot of things up there. But um, they really, there's a lot of, there's at least 30 members in both the House and the Senate that have uh, family members who have uh, Alzheimer's, so they made some shadow boxes too. That's when it got really emotional for them. So we just need buy-in, uh, I think, for them, and that's really a, you know, a cool thing. And then the other thing he talked about was getting up and getting off your butt. This was last year's event called The Longest Day, where you raise money to do something for the longest day of the year. So to honor my mother, I walked uh, 15 hours to all the significant places in, in our lives. That's the house I was born in, and my grandfather, and that was it on the longest day. It's now a $3 million condo, so <laughs> there you have that. And then the top, uh, my mother's the front row, the third from the left. She was singing in the choir when she was a teenager. It was the first uh, Episcopal church for freed slaves. And that's me and my granddaughter along the day. You can see the plaque is still there and everything. And it's on the Smithsonian Historic Tours uh, places. And so there's my purple tennis shoes and everything. I'll be ready to go for uh, June 21st. I'm going to do different walks uh, this year, but all the places that she took us to when we were little, and then all the places that were significant in her adult life um, we went to on that day. So a lot of things we really can do to give us you know, more hope. 
Um, this is the us against Alzheimer's. I know all of you can come to this meeting, but there's tons of caregivers who don't have respite care and can't give out. So um, this uh, us against Alzheimer's support group, I'm one of the moderators, there's five of us. And we have about 4,000 people in this support group. I spent about two hours a day on it. And then everybody's just asking questions. What do you do? Well, mom won't get in the shower. Or, you know, she yelled at me. She threw something at me. And, you know, we just try to support each other and love each other. And some of these people I have never met, but I'm closer to some of these folks that, than I ever, and, you know, to my friends. Because, you know, as the doctor said, you, you don't know this journey until you start to live it. And so, um, it's been really cool, and then, you know, like I said, there's so many of us, even you know, around the world. So we have members from Australia and the UK and all that stuff. So that that part's pretty cool.